The search for the perfect inverse kinematics rig in Blender and in other softwares is a never-ending quest and it has been tackled many times. I'd like to answer this question today, what's the perfect inverse kinematics rig? We will use a leg as an example as it's the most common use of the IK mechanism and I believe it's understandable by everyone. So let's get started. I pushed this rig way further in my rigging course, but here I want to focus on the inverse kinematics mechanism itself. I won't be building any foot rolls or corrective mechanism. You can download the Blender files to follow along on p2designacademy.com for free. Also, I'd like to let you know that I'm running an exceptional sale to celebrate reaching the 100,000 subscriber mark here on YouTube. Find more information in this video and in the video description below. As you will open the file, you will find two rigged leg, a simple bone chain driving the deformation of the leg and the root bone. Those two rigs are identical and will allow us to compare what we are doing along the way. Let's build our simple inverse kinematics mechanism. I will select the foot bone in edit mode, duplicate it and scale it down and rename it IK foot. Now by default, it's parented to the shin. So I will press Alt P and clear the parenting so that now this bone is totally free and there won't be any cyclic dependency. In pose mode, I will select the inverse kinematic foot, then the shin, and I will press Ctrl Shift to C to add an inverse kinematic constraint. I can immediately set the chain length to two bones, the shin and thigh bone, and test my ring moving the controller. If I go in front view and I move it left to right, I get some weird deformations because your knee is not supposed to bend sideways, but we can find a specific inverse kinematic properties under the bone property. Here I can tell the bone not to rotate around the X and Y axis to solve the inverse kinematic mechanism. So basically allow the shin to only rotate around its local Z axis. And I know that because I built the rig and if I display the axis, we can see that I'm rotating around the Z axis. And this is the best default orientation because if you want to create a pole target, the X axis of the owner of the constraint will naturally point toward the pole target. So basically I want my local X axis to point forward in the knee direction. This can be adjusted in the constraint tweaking the pole target angle value but that's not the point of this video. When I move the inverse kinematic control, the leg follows, but I don't have control over the foot. So I can first select the controller, then the foot, and press Ctrl Shift C and add a copy rotation. Now the foot follow the rotation of the controller. And yes, you just heard one of my chicken in the background, but the foot is not following the location nor the scale of the controller. To fix that, I need to add a copy transform. And since the copy transform constraint also covers the rotation, I can get rid of the copy rotation constraint. And this is our very basic inverse kinematic rig. I just reproduced the exact same rig on the other leg. And what I want to show you here is what we call knee popping. As we get closer and closer to a full extended leg, the knee accelerates backward in a very snappy motion. And that's a common problem for animators. The solution you will find in most tutorials, including mine's, is to enable IK stretching. Let's use a value of 0.05. Any value below 0.1 will give the same result. I will set this value on all the bone of the inverse kinematic chain, the shin and the thigh bone. So now when I pull on my inverse kinematic controller, you can see the leg getting bigger and bigger. So it's basically stretching in a way. Because when I think of stretching, I think of uneven scaling with volume preservation. Here the bones are just evenly scaling up. But we'll think about this later. Now when I move both controller, you can clearly see the difference in the way the full extension of the leg is solved and we get a softer motion on the left knee. With IK stretch enabled, the inverse kinematic mechanism changes the scale value of the legs along with rotating the different bones to solve the mechanism and basically follow the inverse kinematic target, what we generally call the inverse kinematic controller. The highest the IK stretch value used, the more scaling will be used to solve the mechanism. And so less rotation will happen. Values going from 0 to 0 0.1 have exactly the same behavior. So I was able to build some kind of soft inverse kinematic mechanism, generating a softer rotation of the knee. 
but it means that my leg gets scaled and I don't want that. Here it's subtle and it's an organic shape so it's fine but on hard surface that won't look as good. To fix that let's pretend that the left and right leg are the same but we have like an inverse kinematic chain driving the deformation chain. To get the same behavior I will add a copy transform constraint on the second foot following exactly the same movement as the first foot in local space. And I want the same rotation behavior of the leg bones as the one with the soft inverse kinematic mechanism. So I can get rid of the inverse kinematic mechanism on the right leg and then simply add a copy rotation from the left leg to the right leg. When I move the left foot, my inverse kinematic mechanism, the right leg rotates the same way. But the foot follows the controller and we get a weird leg shape. To fix that, we can tell the foot bone to stick to the shin bone. To do so, we can use a copy location constraint from the shin onto the foot following the tail of the shin. This now looks way better. We have a consistent leg shape wherever the position of the controller. But the problem is our foot is no longer following the inverse kinematic controller. And as soon as we extend the leg, for example in a walk cycle, the foot on the right leg will have an arcing motion. It won't stay on the ground. And believe me, this will show in your animation. So let me exaggerate the motion so that you can clearly see this arcing. If my left leg representing the controller is straight on the ground and slightly overstretched, you can see that the foot is no longer sliding on the ground but kind of balancing like a pendulum or whatnot. So this mechanism doesn't work. Let's find another solution. Basically what we need is to control the distance between our inverse kinematic controller and the root of the inverse kinematic chain. But you may not want to use a limit distance constraint. I tried different combination and it's not ideal because the distance is an absolute value and one meter on a human being and one meter on a hand won't look the same. What I mean by that is the limit distance constraint is prone to error or bugs whenever you want to change the scale of your whole rig. So we will prefer to use a limit scale instead. Our hips bone is the parent of the leg. So it will also be the parent of our scale bone. The scale bone will start at the root of the leg. So I can select in edit mode the head of the org leg bone and extrude it. I will rename it MCH leg length. I will select the ankle joint, snap the cursor to it, pressing Shift S and then snap the tail of my length bone to the ankle. This length bone will be used to control the target bone of the inverse kinematics chain. So we need to create another inverse kinematic bone. We will have one controller and one target bone. In edit mode, I will duplicate the inverse kinematic bone, scale it down and rename it MCHIK foot. And then I will parent it to the inverse kinematic foot bone. You can use the select menu using Alt right click or Alt left click depending on your configuration. Now in pose mode, I will first select my inverse kinematic controller, then shift select the length bone, press Ctrl Shift C and add a stretch to constraint. When I move the IK controller, we can see the length bone stretching. Let me get rid of the axis display because we don't need it, it will be a little clearer. My MCH IK foot is a child of the IK foot controller, so it does what the IK foot controller does. But I want it to stay in a given range, driven by the length bone. And to do so, we'll use a copy location. In pose mode, select first the length bone, then the MCH IK foot bone, press Ctrl Shift C and add a copy location constraint. By default, the bone will snap to the head of the length bone. So let's change that in the constraint and set the tail value to 1. Now I want the MCH IK foot to be the target of the inverse kinematics constraint. So let's select our sheen bone and let's edit the inverse kinematic constraint and as a target use the MCH IK foot. If we now select our inverse kinematic controller, the IK foot, and we move it, the MCH IK bone follows, triggering the inverse kinematic mechanism. Nothing new. 
So if I want to limit the distance at which this MCHIK foot travels, I simply need to add a limit scale constraint to our MCH length bone. We want to limit the stretching of the bone, so we want to limit the maximum Y value. By default, it is set to zero, so now our bone is really small. We want to use the local space of the bone, and let's start with a scale value of one. As I confirm this value, we can see that our length bone is shortened. The MCH IK bones follow, thanks to the copy location constraint, and so does our inverse kinematic chain. But the foot is still following the controller. This is why we have this weird deformation. So let's fix this. I don't want the ORG bone to follow the foot controller anymore. I want it to follow the MCH IK foot. Right now it has a copy transform constraint following the IK foot, the controller. So let's get rid of it and instead add a new copy transform constraint targeting the MCH IK foot. Select first the MCH IK foot, then shift select the ORG foot bone, press Ctrl Shift C and choose copy transform. The MCH IK foot does everything the IK foot does but its location is limited by the MCH leg length. So now we can slightly increase the length of the MCH leg length to get a full extended leg, let's say 0.05 for example, and the MCH IK bone won't go beyond this limit. So we get our soft IK, we get a limit in the length of the leg, so we don't get this weird deformation between the foot and the leg. The result will be less jittery than when using a copy rotation, but as long as you limit the distance, there will be a threshold where you will still have this pendulum effect. The only way to get rid of it is to not use a limit scale. It's to not use a limit at all. I know it's often reinsuring for beginners to have this limit, but as an animator, I do believe it's the animator job to set the limit visually. Assuming that, we will face other problems. So let's solve them. Since I decided it's the animator's job to decide how much the leg should stretch, then let's get rid of the MCH leg length bone. And here comes a new problem. I still have my soft IK, but if I pull the leg, I get this weird inverse kinematic stretching that is more of an even scaling than a real stretching with volume preservation. How can we solve that? We will need a second bone chain. Select a both leg bone, press tab to enter edit mode, shift D to duplicate them, and then shift H to hide everything. I will rename those bone MCH leg IK and MCH shin IK. And as we switch to pose mode, the inverse kinematic is already set on it since we duplicated the chain with the inverse kinematics constraint. Let's move the MCH bones to another layer so that it's a little bit clearer. As always, I'm using the bone manager add-on by my friend Thin. It's a must have so far for rigging as you can name the layers and it has so many functionalities. On our original chain, we don't need the inverse kinematic constraint anymore. Press Ctrl Alt C to get rid of it. Now, we need to enter edit mode and duplicate those two bones and make them smaller. As I scale them down, I can see that they are still connected, so I will press Alt P and disconnect the parents. They are still parented, but they are no longer connected. And I can now scale those new bones down. Now what I want is to parent those two bones to our MCH inverse kinematic chain so that they follow the inverse kinematic movement. We can do that entering edit mode and instead of using the control P shortcut, we can go in the bone properties and under relations, type in the name of the bones we want them to be parented with. I like this way a lot whenever my rig is getting more complex. If I now move the foot controller, we can see that those bones are following the inverse kinematic chain, but our original bones don't follow. So what we can do is tell them to copy the transformations of those new bones. So let's first select the small bone, then shift select the leg bone, press Ctrl Shift C and add a copy transform constraint. We now need to do the same with the shin. So let's select the small shin bone, then the shin bone, press Ctrl Shift C, add a copy transform constraint. 
and we are back to square one. When we move the foot, those new bones follow their parent, the inverse kinematic chain, and they influence the original bones. But we can now tell them to follow the scale of another bone, for example, the root bone, which isn't scale at all. So let's add a copy scale constraint to those small bones, targeting the armature and the root bone. As we do so, we're getting a critical change in our rig. So let's go ahead, select the second small bone, and then add to it a copy scale constraint targeting the armature and the root bone. You can see that the shin bone is not following its corresponding small bone. And this is because a copy transform constraint doesn't override the location transform of a connected bone. So we need to select our original bone, enter edit mode, press Alt P and disconnect it. Now we do have some kind of separation, but we don't get a real stretching. Only the knee and ankles are deforming, not the whole leg. And this is the final step. I will select all my bones and reset the pose. Press Alt R R G Alt S to cancel the scale, location and rotation of the bones. Then use the small shin bone to add a stretch to constraint onto the original leg bone. And then we can use our MCH IK foot to add a stretch to constraint onto our original shin bone. And voila, if I select my inverse kinematic controller and I move the foot, we can see that we can stretch it with a proper volume preservation, we can scale the foot and we still have our soft IK mechanism. But this rig as is can't be used for game animation because with bone stretching we get uneven scaling and with uneven scaling we get a lot of bugs when it comes to game engines. Now we don't need 4 additional minutes to solve that. Instead of using a stretch to constraint, we can use a dumped track constraint. We keep the soft inverse kinematic mechanism, we can slightly stretch the leg as the bones will separate. You don't get volume preservation, but if you don't overstretch the leg, it looks pretty natural. And your game engine will thank you about this. Then to finalize the rig, I advise you to add a pull target. I just wanted to save time not setting a pull target on all the chains we just created. So to conclude, what's the perfect inverse kinematic rig? Well, I don't know, you have to pick one of them. The base inverse kinematic mechanism without IK stretch is the best for mechanical parts because your joints will perfectly follow. But when it comes to organic mechanism or organic shapes, then it's up to your animation style or your target platform, feature animation or game animation. This is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and I will see you in the next one.